Hi y'all, welcome to my kitchen. Today I got a fun project for you. Uh, my wife wanted to replace these kind of clunky, uh, hefty salt and pepper shakers with, with something out of, out of wood. Uh, I turned this uh, pepper mill sometime back, so I, what I thought I would do is turn a complimentary uh, salt shaker to go with it. Um, so I turned, I turned this, this sample uh, out of cherry. I didn't hollow it or anything, just to shake so I can get her uh, approval on that before I, before I get started. Okay, with the, uh, the shape approved, I'm ready to get started. Next step is find an appropriate piece of wood. Most any type of dry hardwood is going to work just fine. Uh, I was just so fortunate to be able to find a, a block of that same piece of spalted maple that um, I had used for this project, and this was like three years ago. Just, hey, go figure. Sometimes you get lucky. Since my project is only about two and five eighths inch, uh, thick. I need a blank about two and five eighths square and oh maybe five inches or so long. Uh, because of this uh, spalting pattern I wanted to figure out wh which one would be most visible so I'm going to cut it in this this corner right here. Okay I mount the block between the centers and and rough it out, rough it around. Anchor the tool right about up to the end. Make sure your tenon is appropriate for your uh, chuck, in this case parallel, and you've got a nice clean shoulder at a 90 degree angle. Using that tenon we just turned, I'm going to put this in the chuck and face off what was going to be the bottom. You can use any number of tools to face this off. I'm going to use a uh, 3 8 inch bar uh, spindle gouge with a fairly blunt, blunt grind because it will shear and scrape at the same time. I want to cut right on center. There we go. I don't want to rock on the table, so I want to make sure that it's it's flat. That's good. I don't need a sketch since I have a, a sample, so I'm going to set this right here and just mark what will be the end. In order that I can give my, my eye something to adjust to, I'm going to go ahead and take a thin parting tool and make a parting cut. Not enough to weaken the, the mass down here, just enough to make it real clear where the end is. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is make a, just a little bit of a chamfer where the drill bit's going to go, the initial drilling. I'm going to use a skew for that. For the bun that I'm going to be using, uh, I need it to be uh, one, one inch, so I'm going to use a large one inch drill bit that I have, and I'm going to drill three and five eighths. I'm going to mark just a couple of critical uh, critical locations. One is going to be where this V groove is going to be. The other one is going to be the high point here and the high point here. So let's just bring this around. I want to do the outside before they do the inside. I feel like uh, I'll have fewer surprises that way. So I'm going to make a little uh, V groove right here with a skew. It's not very deep, less than less than a quarter of an inch. Okay. 
now I can start shaping to match match this before I start the hollowing process. Now I'm not going to do too much here on this very front end because uh, I don't want to reduce the mass here support when I go to hollowing. So I will finish the, the final shaping uh, here when we turn it around. I'm going to start using a 3 8 inch uh, spindle gouge and kind of uh, shape this a little bit. I'm going to start with bringing this end down a little bit. Okay, this is not a particularly complicated uh, turning. It's projecting out a little bit and it might get a little chatter. I'm going to go ahead and use a cone center to kind of stabilize this just a little bit. what the bung is going to look like but I've got to recess it a bit and I want a little bit of room outside that to get my fingernails to make it easy to get it in and out so I'm going to snap pencil uh, so but I'm going I want to leave this as strong as possible while I'm hollowing so I'll come back and do that later I just got to know when I'm hollowing that I need to give myself lots of room back here before I start hollowing uh, to handle this this uh, recess a bit so it's probably going to be somewhere oh looks like right about right about there before I start hollowing if you're doing a smaller one you may not have to do much of any hollowing uh, but this is fairly large I don't really need the capacity but I want to reduce the weight so let me show you the tools I'm going to use to do some hollowing I'll probably start with this half inch uh, spindle gouge and, and then other options I've got, I've got this uh, box, box scraper I can come down and hollow out some of the metal. Uh, a little bit less aggressive is this negative rake scraper. I can kind of keep flat on the tool rest, extend fairly deep, and it won't be real aggressive because it'll take a while. But uh, again, not too aggressive. Once I get down most of this hollowed out and I want to come back and get a little bit more behind the where the bung is going to be, I'll probably use this stale niche style uh, nickel scraper to kind of get in there. I've got marked exactly where I can start cutting. Slow the speed down just a little bit. I'm going to come in here and get some of this uh, some of these chips out of here so I'm going to use my uh, uh, lung powered air compressor so now I'm going to see if I can get a little deep with this box scraper uh, using my arm uh, over it to give me a little extra leverage switch to uh, a round negative rake scraper because I can keep it flat. I feel like it'd be a little less aggressive, a little less likely to, uh, by extending it deep, to, to feed. projecting out a little bit. Right. This would certainly be easier if I had a larger hole, but I don't. So 
I'm going to use this nickel scraper to kind of come in back behind here and get a little bit more out through here. Blow it out again. I have this wooden uh, mouthpiece on there just so I'll know which end to blow into because otherwise it uh, it'd be pretty nasty. Okay, now I'm going to reduce this right here for that bung, and I think I'll just use a uh, uh, the box scraper. I'll just come in with this parallel. just about got it. Okay, I'm going to go through the grits, do a little sanding. And with the grain, get rid of any radial scratches. shaping the top before I did that. So now I've got a little more of a challenge of uh, trying to get this choked up. So let's try to put a some type of jam chuck on here. It's close. Spindle gouge. Actually I'm going to take a peeling cut on this side. But, uh, Feeding and parting tool. I'm going to taper that just a little bit. Good fit. See what I can do. And I think I'll just uh, spray a little water. Swell the fibers. Tear that off. Tear that off. Alright, now I need to bring up some type of support that will still allow me to get down to the very end. Soft touch until I get most of the shaping done. Okay. And so we're going to use the 3 8 inch detail gouge.
shape the point. There's not a lot of support here, so I'm going to try to keep my fingers kind of holding it as I use this really tiny little gouge to put a point on the end. So let's see what I can do. Um, speed's fairly slow. That's a challenge. Nice and solid. Now I'm going to take a little tape and hold it down. Maybe the tape will, will do a little bit better than just my hands. Oops, got the tape going the wrong way. I'll do it this way, I've got to cover that up. That'll sand out just fine. So let me start with 180 grit on that end. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, make a small circle, and I think I'm going to use the uh, edge of the skew to do that. And that's where I'm going to be drilling those holes on that circle. Just mark it. Okay, I'm going to use my birdcage awl along this hole, along this little ring, and mark one here, one directly across from it. And I'm going to turn this. I left this in the chuck to give me something to hold on to. And then, equidistant between those, I'm going to make a hole equidistant from these two, I'm going to make a mark a hole to drill those holes straight down. And there we go. Now I can go ahead and take it off the jam chuck. Now all I got to do is, is finish it. I'm happy with that. I did not sand the inside, did not feel as necessary. I just used an old toothbrush, kind of scrubbed it down a little bit, get, try to get rid of any uh, sawdust that's in there. And I'm going to finish it with my favorite finish, Minwax Antique Oil. Uh, I'll build up enough coats till I feel like I'm where I want it to be. Might take four, might take five. And then after that, I will I will buff it. This will really make the grain pop. Easy finish, not a fast finish because it would take several days. You got to wait uh, oh half a day for the first coat, and then after that, at least 24 hours for uh, other coats. But I'm never in a hurry. Well, I hope you enjoyed this salt shaker. Here's a picture of the final project. If you're interested in, in watching a video of me turning the uh, pepper mill out of that same, uh, same piece of spalted maple, click on the link above. And be sure to come back next week for the Four Ways collaborative videos that we're going to re be releasing on March 1st. That is, Sam Angelo, uh, Richard Raffin, Tomislav Tomasek, and myself will all be issuing a, a, a video on the same project. On, on our own respective channels. And remember, y'all stay safe. Come on back here.